Whenever Easter comes around, we can be sure to hear homilies at Mass about the resurrection and the earthly mission of Christ being fulfilled and all matter of topics being somehow related to the resurrection of our Lord. Even Pope Francis talks about our blessed Lord openly at Easter. It is that special of a time. I'm going to go over today Francis's remarks at the vigil celebration at St. Peter's Basilica, where again he did not say the Easter Mass at the High Altar in St. Peter's, something he hasn't done since the Pac-Man Mama event of October 2019. And yes, I'm saying the demon's name incorrectly on purpose. Anyway, his address was worldly, a little weird, and filled with the usual Francis aphorisms. But more than that, we've seen yet more barbs leveled at those of us who want the same Catholic faith that was taught to our forebears throughout history. Yes, the traditionally minded along the faithful were the subject of homilies throughout the entire Tritium homilies by Francis and his staff. So let's dive into this because Francis begins to speak there's always something interesting that emerges from it. Beginning where our Lord said that it was finished, on Good Friday, the papal preacher, Cardinal Cantola Mesa, told everyone that worldly material systems undermined fraternity in the church. Now, I don't know about you, but whenever someone uses secular labels of from the worlds of ideas to describe the inner workings of the church in any other way than as a useful shorthand, I start to get nervous. Catholic News Agency reported this on Friday. From that outlet, we get the following, quote, I believe that we all need to make a serious examination of conscience in this regard and be converted, the papal preacher said on the 2nd of April. Fomenting division is the work par excellence of the one whose name is Diabolos, that is, the divider, the enemy who sows weeds, as Jesus referred to him in the parable. See Matthew chapter 13, verse 25. Cantola Mesa, who was made a cardinal in November in recognition of his over 41 years as preacher of the papal household, gave the homily at Pope Francis's Good Friday liturgy at the altar of the chair in St. Peter's Basilica. End quote. A couple things to note here. First, pointing out that some of the shepherds have led their flocks astray isn't exactly the same thing as what he is saying here. He might disagree, though, which begs a question of whether his message is truly for everyone to just remain quiet and go along with whatever is coming out of the Vatican these days, especially considering that the purpose of pointing out the state of things in the church is not to, fo to foment division at all. But at least for me and virtually everyone else I know who does this, it's to promote prayer for the church and the call for people to embrace the timeless truths of the faith in a sea of continuing and relentless innovation that leaves the faithful utterly adrift. But the program of the modernists has been built on the assumption that, largely speaking, there would be unquestioning obedience in the face of these innovations over the decades. And now that that's no longer guaranteed inside the church, it is understandable that those employed by Francis would speak on the issue, which is something that has preoccupied Francis for some time now. And what is that? This call to, well, return to tradition, so to speak. It's a call that is being made by greater numbers of Catholics everywhere, from all walks of life. If anything, it is almost something that is unifying more and more Catholics all the time. And what is Francis's response? What is his response to traditional priestly fraternities having their masses on Sunday growing and growing and growing, while Novus Ordo masses tend to be shrinking and shrinking and shrinking, and now we have data that backs that up. On the vigil mass on Holy Saturday, Francis said in his papal homily, quote, Jesus urges you not to indulge in nostalgia for the past or a cynicism about the present, even if you feel all is lost. Please open yourself to amazement at the newness Jesus brings. End quote. Ah, yes, because all things were renewed in Christ, we must not hold fast to the traditions that we were taught by the Church throughout our history and embrace now a constant renewal, even if that severs the deposit of faith from the glorious past of the Church. That makes sense, right? But this brings me back to Cardinal Cantalamese's Good Friday Address where that Mass featured the same thing we've seen from Francis in St. Peter's since the time of the Pac-Man Mama event in 2019, a continued avoidance of using the main altar at St. Peter's. Francis hasn't used it all since that time, not one time. And when that happened, back in the Pac-Man Mama event back in 2019, an idol was placed on the altar, and he hasn't used it since. Kind of something to think about here. Returning now to the CNA article, though, quote, at the beginning of the liturgy, Pope Francis entered a silent basilica and lay prostrate for about two minutes on the floor at the foot of the steps to the altar. He then stood for another three minutes in silence. 
After the liturgy of the word, including the chanting of the reading from the Gospel of St. John, Cantilla Mesa preached on the topic of human fraternity, the subject of Pope Francis's 2020 encyclical, Fratelli Tutti, to the congregation of about 140 people and around 50 cardinals, end quote. And there the cardinal gave everyone a primer on the message of Fratelli Tutti in the Pac-Man Mama event, the new Tower of Babel that we are seeing constructed as part of the work of the ape of the church. It is also tiresome, but we shouldn't expect Good Friday and Easter Sunday to be free of these messages. After all, why hold back on your main message when the world is watching, right? Again, quoting the cardinal. We are brothers not only because we all have the same father in virtue of creation, but we also have the same brother, Christ, the first born among my brothers in virtue of redemption, he said. For us, that means universal fraternity starts with the Catholic Church, end quote. Right, but there's something else there about that, and that is, uh, you know, there was a qualifier when our Lord said that we were all his brothers, and was after they, uh, had, cons they had eaten of the bread of the table. But you notice there nothing about the need to acknowledge that Christ is king, and that he is the sole way to the Father, and that is only done through the church he established on earth. The church never preached this universal ideal in its history until the post-conciliar era. And yet here we are. Which brings us back to Francis, who, before launching into his usual call to take the church to the peripheries, he said this, from an article on Religious News. Quote, In talking about Christ's invitation, also means setting out on new paths. The Pope criticized what he called a faith of memories, the kind of faith, he explained, that can become the memory of something once beautiful, now simply to be recalled. Instead, he said, Jesus asks the faithful to do is to be alive and to get back on the road. Jesus is not outdated, Francis said. He is alive here and now. He walks beside you each day. In every situation you are experiencing, in every trial you have to endure, in your deepest hopes and dreams, end quote. The faith of memories. You know, it's those sorts of statements that are largely responsible for the rigid demeanor many of us dedicated to preserving the traditional teachings and liturgy of the Church being so rigid in our approach to Francis, to put it mildly. The Catholic faith is timeless. The same truths that were taught by the apostles and by their acolytes were taught to our great-great-grandparents. Over time, the Church developed better and fuller ways of explaining various things, but the truth remained the same. Then it changed, apparently, suddenly, and by the admission of the innovators, who defend the changes made by the Council. I mean, we had, you know, Massimo Fascioli tell us recently, right, you know, on America Magazine's website, that we cannot have our 16th century theology. We can have the liturgy, but not the theology of the 16th century. And that is fascinating. And now we are predictably told to not look back. Because the influence of figures like Teilhard de Chardin requires that we apply the concept of evolution to the truth of the deposit of the faith, meaning that what was true theologically in our past may not be true now. And that's an astonishing thing to say. But functionally, that is what is being said here. Our Lord says he is the truth, and that the truth is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But we are now told that the truth changes. Or that, as Francis has said on some things, he knows better than all his predecessors on topics that the Church accepted throughout its history without debate. Francis's vigil address was this topic wrapped in Catholic language. If you go read his address, you'll see plenty of references to our Lord, his triumph, and all the things you would expect to hear from the presumed pontiff on Easter. It's a good thing unequivocally to present our Lord and his victory on that day. But to use him as a vehicle for innovation is something else entirely, and to use his Feast of the Resurrection to engage in pushing for us to be severed from our theological history and to embrace his springtime of renewal is something else as well. Christ is constant, the truths of the faith are constant, and the church is supposed to be a rock for us to tie ourselves to in the stormy seas of life. His words undermine that very central feature of Catholic living. I could go on and on. I initially intended to talk about how Francis' address was focused on material topics, but how that's not exactly a new thing in the history of the church, and how papal Easter addresses have been a means of connecting the material concerns of the secular world to the risen Lord for centuries, while still pointing out where the Francis address strayed away from the precedence of his papal predecessors. But then these digs at tradition came, and that changed everything. But let me know what you think about this in the comments, please. And like, subscribe, and hit that bell. It actually does help. Remember to pray for the Church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.